Yo, yo, I'm Mixed Mowers and Mower Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to look at a John Deere lawnmower. Um, a bloke messaged me, or actually a bull, a bloke messaged me on uh, oh, Instagram, I think, and he's having problems with his machine. Um, what did he say? He said he, um, oh, the belt come off or, or whatever, and it had no drive. So he said, could you um, put the belt on for me? <laughs> Not an easy job. Um, did that, uh, but as I was taking the... Um, uh, that put a new belt on, uh, I noticed that the rotor clutch on it was pretty much non-existent. The, 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 the clutch material had, had, had gone, so a new clutch was needed. So I told him, you are aware that your, your rotor clutch is at it, isn't it? And uh, he said, no, I wasn't aware of that, um, because I don't think you can actually get the, get the clutch off. So in today's video, um, what I'm going to show you, rather than buying a brand new half rotor clutch, so they're about 140 quid for that sort of style machine. You can get cheaper for Honda ones. But the John Deere and the Hater ones, they're a bit pricey, they're about 120 quid. Um, but there is an alternative for you to do your rotor clutches, which I'm going to try today. So we'll get down on dirt in a little while. Let me go and take it outside, show you the mower, and then we'll get set up on the bench, and then we'll go from there. So today's video, how to refurb your rotor clutch on your lawnmower. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mowers and Mower Man, hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I've done a video. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty. Let's get outside, get this John Deere fired up, show what it's doing, what it's not doing, and we'll go from there. Right, so here's John Deere. Hi, John. Um, what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to fire the rotor clutch up, okay, but I'll show you that in a bit. So fuel on. Um, uh, choke it. Choke it. Drives at the back. So this had no drive on it originally. I want a bit of petrol. I don't, I don't know a lot about this machine. But I had no drive, but now it drives, which it wasn't doing beforehand, right? Got a bit of a hunt and surge on it too, but um, it's not in for that. I dare say it wants a bit of work. Oh, it's out of fuel. Let's check that out of fuel. A little bit in there. It seems to have settled down now as well a little bit. Let's see if it'll idle. That's actually off button there, Mick. That's why, that, that's why that's doing that. That bit about there then. So the rotor clutch does work, but when I took it apart, um, I was a bit dubious. So let me take put it up on a bench. We'll have the rotor clutch off. Um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do to it. Hopefully save you guys and girls a little bit of money when it comes to your rotor clutches. Now, this is possible to do, um, and it's not, it's not normally the best way to go about doing it, but it is certainly the way they do it in, 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 when they come brand new. So let's get up on the bench, take it apart, and get this clutch refurbished. Right, so John Deere's now up on its bum. Got the Allen key. Now, I'm assuming this come to me because I think somebody had a go at it beforehand. I think, I'm not sure. Don't hold me to it. But it looked quite quite clean here, like someone had been in. So I've got, I've got my Allen bolt here. I'm going to use my nice little soft blow hammer. Soft blow hammer, not hard blow hammer. Tap that in there. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to impact off from my half inch. Not set number three. Set number two should be fine. That's just going to run the right way. I'm just going to loosen that off. Number three, then. There it goes right now. Oof. Now, with that loose off a touch, what I'm now going to do, I'm now going to remove the um, the bolts, which will be the 14 mils. Now, if you find that when you do this, your engine spins, what you might have to do is remove the plug and chuck some pull cord down the cylinder head so it acts like a... Um, uh, like a piston stop. Otherwise, you might find that actually you, you can't remove your um, your rotor clutch because you, because the the whole engine is spinning, right? So you might have to do that. And I'll demonstrate that for you very very shortly. Let me take that, let me take that, that blade off first. So I think that might be where some of the guys and girls got a little bit stuck, right? So if you say if we say we're going to start undoing that, and that starts just to spin and it's not actually coming off, what you got to do is tip your lawnmower back onto its wheels, right? Like that. And in here is your spark plug, right? 
got an NGK bollocks fit in there. Take that off. Remove a plug. Take it all the way out. Long threads on these overhead valve plugs. Take that off. Right, now grab yourself a bit of old pull cord. If you haven't got any new pull cord, then uh, any, any old pull cord, then use a bit of new stuff. But I've, I've normally got loads of pull cord flying everywhere in this shed, and at the moment in time, I can't find a bit. So I've got a nice big lump of uh, 4.5. So I'm gonna grab about two feet of uh, pull cord, right? Two and a half, three feet. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna use the two ends, right? I'm gonna use a middle bit, okay? That way you can always tell, if you use the end bit and it goes through one of the ports, you might snap a bit off. So get the end bit like that, or the middle bit, and just bung that into a hole. And you wanna bung it in there till you can't get no more in there, right? And don't go punching around with screwdrivers and bits and pieces like that. Just give the rope a bit of a twist as you're putting it in. And let it go. And dependent on where the piston is, dependent on where what the position the piston is in, you'll only be able to get so much rope in there, right? Now, once you've got quite a bit in there, we can tip the lawnmower back up onto its onto its bum again. It's going to be around there. Now, when we impact that off, you, you'll find that that will spin originally, but then it but then it will start to it will stop, and then you'll be able to undo it. Okay. Otherwise, it's just spinning. And it's spinning because this is still connected to the crankshaft. I put that on. And there you go. Because the crankshaft of the piston was held, that allowed me to remove um, just a bolt and the, the engine wasn't spinning. So nice little mixed mowers, top tip for you there. Don't use the end of a pull cord, use a middle bit. Right, on to the next step. Right. That first step done, so all we've done so far is the two bolts out from the uh, blade and the big bolt out from the center of the rotor clutch, right? And the pull cord is still inside, inside the piston, uh, inside the, the, the ball. Now this part here is a bit we're after. And that wheel, this has is, this is come off just yesterday because I was doing a, a belt on it, okay? So that's why mine's come off quite freely, but you might have to use a little bit of this, just a little bit, just to wobble that bit loose, and that, that bit will actually come off. Now there is what is left, of a clutch. You see it, that little bit there, that's what's left. All the bit around here is missing, right? The rest of that isn't too bad. It doesn't look too bad, but what I wanna do is I wanna knock that piece of clutch off and then give it a little tiny sand, just very, very gently, just to reface it, and then we we'll go from there. So let me knock that bit of, bit of clutch material off that just go on the screwdriver. Give it a quick little sand, I'll be back to you in one, two, three seconds. Right, rotor clutch now. Uh, or, or, or clutch is now on the um, on the uh, on the bench. So a big spring there. Now all I'm going to be doing, I just knocked that little tiny bit of clutch material off of there. That's all I did. Okay. So a little bit of sandpaper. It doesn't have to be massive. Okay. I'm not talking about um, bringing it right back to bare material. All I'm saying is this just wants to be relatively clean to get rid of any any bits and pieces that might be on there. I don't know if I'm rocking, rocking you guys about it. I was rocking you guys about then. I'll do it again. Right, so on here, I've got uh, the clutch off a lawnmower. All done, I just knocked that little tiny bit of uh, clutch material off. That's all it is um, off of there. As you can see, um, it come off there, and that's where it was. So it's just the remaining part there. Bit of sandpaper. And all I'm going to do, literally, is just going to, using my wrist action, I'm just going to literally clean up the surface off this rotor clutch. Now, I want to be taking it back roughly to, de to decent metal where there's no rust. That's the idea. But I don't want to be taking too much material off. So just spend a bit of time now, 10, 15 minutes, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of carburetor spray maybe, something like that, just, just to make sure we, we're, going to, we're going to get this area nice and clean. And once you've done that, you can see where that clutch used to be. See, just there, see it there? So you want to bring it all down nice and level. Now, the fear is, is if you go too rough, Two coarse of sandpaper, and this is only what's this here? This is probably about this is probably around about uh, 120 grit, something like that. Just a real small little sand, and just bring that clutch back to um, where it needs to be. Obviously, I've got my uh, my face mask on, glasses on, ear protection on, and what have you, gloves. Um, just make sure that you're uh, you're sanding it back nice and even. 
spend the 10 minutes doing it. Once you've done it, um, I'll come back to you and, uh, and we'll go from there and hopefully we'll get, to, uh, get a new clutch fitted. Right, so clutch plate has now been cleaned up relatively smooth. It's a lot better than what it was. What you want now is a, uh, a whiteboard marker pen, something like that. Now I bought off of um, eBay uh, a rotor clutch. Now these actually come off a hater, but they are roughly the same thing, right? Now all you want to do now is put this on so it's central. Just take your time and make sure you look at all the diameters, make sure it's all about right. Now generally, you can see the lips on, on the far side. It's going to be around about there, all right? going to be around about there give or take just make sure you get nice and symmetrical and once you're happy with it and you look down the center and it looks to be all about level here now it's not an exact science it wants to be about there i'd say that's going to be that's going to be roughly where, where it's going to go now what i'm going to do i'm going to hold that down with my whiteboard marker pen just going to draw a line all the way around that just so i can tell for future i saw a whiteboard marker it's not going to hurt it where, where that clutch is going to go. So I'll just line it up, put it on there like that, and I know that's actually Bo that, that, that's Bob Martin, right? So happy with that. Put that to one side. Next thing you want to do is pick yourself up off of Amazonian eBay, one of these child-proof containers. So it takes about 45 hours to get into, and you end up cutting your wrists and your fingers trying to get into it. Pick yourself up some JB Weld or something similar. Okay, now I'm not endorsed by JB Weld. I'd love to be, but I'm not. Um, you can use a, a, an, an arrow die kind of material but use it use the metal one don't use the um the normal one use a metal one it's like it's like a stainless steel one and all you want to do with this is equal quantities of jb weld one there like that and then get your other one do that up get your other one and equal quantities of both it's going to be about there and then a little tiny, little tiny mixing thing just to um, mix all that up. Mix that up and I'll come back to you in two seconds. Okay, JB Weld is now all, um, all mixed up, okay? Now all we want to do is just get this JB Weld and very carefully just put it on to the, the non-running edge of this rotor clutch. Just go carefully put it on got to work quite quick because it does go off but we're in no rush here because this project is going to take about 24 hours to go off now just simply just run that down just nice and smooth it smooth it all down it's nice and tidy like that oh, it's a touch more if I can get it just to put it in there It'd be nice lovely right Let's get rid of that out of the way. Let's bring the rotor clutch back in. Now, this is the hard bit. We want to get this rotor clutch fitted. Now, I'm just over, over the camera, so I can't really see a lot. I'm going to fit that right over there. It's going to be about there. Let me check that just behind the camera so I can see. Right, so I'm happy with its positioning. Now, I've got four big clamps. Well, not big, they're just... Decent size. I've got four big clamps here, which I have at the top of my rafters just for such projects. Now, this has got a set now for up to 24 hours. So grab your clamp, fit it underneath there, hold it in place, get your next clamp. Now it's going to move about a little tiny bit, so just be prepared for that. Put that in there, and then even it up, even it up, so you know where you are. Be about right there, I'd say. I might just try and move those clamps around a touch, just to try and get a bit more, a bit more hold on it. That's better. All right. Now, any final positioning needs to be done now. Get it where you want it get it happy and then just tidy up any edges with a cloth or wherever with a bit of w, a bit of um, JB Weld's just just gone over just go round with it tidy up all your edges make sure you're happy with it because once this goes off you got no chance now if you went to look at buying a new clutch for this you'll be looking at around about uh, 150 120 quid something like that 
and pretty much all they do in the shops when you when you buy it brand new so you know from a shop and it comes complete as a half clutch pretty much all it is is um is a clutch that's been glued to a plate that's all it is they just glue it so that's all we're doing here so we've now got a brand new clutch fitted to the rotor part of it and i'm hoping in 24 hours i'm going to come back to this um i'm not going to touch this now that'll just be left and then hopefully we can then refit this back onto our lawnmower and it'll have a brand spanking new clutch and that new clutch will cost you uh, 20 quid uh, for the part so it's not a particularly hard job to do um, and if you've got a little bit of time on your hands you know we find you find yourself a little bit free one afternoon you might be able to just do this yourself at home so i'm just going to go around now tied up a little bit of just excess material double check i'm exactly where i want to be because as i say once it once this sticks to the proverbial blanket you've got no hope of moving that off so make sure it's all, all where it needs to be and i'll come back to you in 24 hours time when it's set and then we're going to refit it and test it so yeah should be good the gentleman's waiting for his mower to come back so um he's been on, on me for a little while now for a couple of days saying can you do it Mick? i'm really i'm really in need of it so hopefully it'll be done soon so see you in 24 hours right so back on the bench today after a couple of days is the john deere um I've been a bit busy doing other bits and pieces, but uh, I wanted to give that time for that rotor clutch to actually uh, adhere. Let me, just, let me just grab that quick. My old flip flop just fell off. Let me grab that rotor clutch. Oh, so there it is there. So the rotor clutch is now. Remove the clamps. I've got a little bit of JB Weld just to, just to tidy up there, knock that bit off, that's all I've got to do. Uh, but there's a the rotor clutch there, all now adhered to. So that's good. So a little bit of JB Weld just to knock off off the side there if I can get that off. There it goes. And uh, I'm hoping that, that that's going to hold. I am hoping so. I think I, th I think it will. Um, but we shall see because um, it is a bit of an experiment I'm doing. And uh, hopefully, if it works, then it's a cheap fix for cheap cheap fix for the fella because it's only cost him sort of uh, twenty pound for the part. So that's all right because otherwise it'd be. Sort of a hundred or hundred odd pound. Just make sure there's nice smooth edges on this rotor clutch and nothing scuffs up. Which it is. Right, so let's get the uh, John Deere in position. Oh, it's not the lightest of machines, I must admit. Why not coming over here? Uh, Mr. John Deere, why are you giving me abuse? That's it, right. Okay. Let's put that down in the a cardiac a rest position there if that's going down a bit more let's go down all the way down there that's better so now we can now fit the rotor clutch i've got the uh the blade to reinstall and the couple of bolts let me just find the bits and bobs because they're everywhere in here at the moment i've got so i've got bits all over the shop that i've been working on so i've got to find the blade bolt itself which is there that's that so now that should go onto there, like that. That should be good. I can then get my main bolt up through. That should be there. And that'll centralise all of that. And then with the pull cord um, rope still in the top, I can now do up um, the bolt for the centre. So this, this may spin because it's all part of one unit, but once that once that um, uh, pull cord actually takes hold, um, that will stop it spinning. So, so that's actually spinning the whole lot. Yeah, I'll push a bit more rope into the top of a cylinder to stop that piston from spinning. <clears throat> and push a bit more in there. Just got to compress it all down so that that piston can't can't come up otherwise the rotor clutch won't work so i'm just going to pour pour that string into the cylinder head and you'll know when it's there because this has stopped spinning like that so that's on let me retract the bolt and I can then put the the blade on. 
one of those. One of those, and I want a, there's about a 17 mil socket on there, I think. Uh, where did that go? So I have got tools and bits and pieces everywhere. So I've been working on a multitude of machinery that I've purchased and bits and bobs. Let's just whip that. On goes the blade. On goes that. Right, that's on. So now, by rights, that's all on. That, that should spin freely, okay? Um, and once you engage the clutch, the clutch will come down, bite the clutch material, and the blade should spin. That's the idea. So there's no time like the present to go outside and try it. Hopefully, we've uh, repaired this clutch, put some new material on it, and uh, it'd be good enough to operate the rotor clutch, because all that was left was a little tiny piece like that, small piece, and the clutch was no good. So let's take it outside, give it a test. Right, John Deere now outside. It's a beautiful day. So, hopefully, it'll be a beautiful day for John Deere too. Let's turn that fuel on. Fuel's now on. Uh, we've got petrol in there, have we? Yeah, plenty of petrol. So, what I want it to do, I want, I want it to fire up, but I don't want the, the, the blade to spin initially. That's got to spin when I ask it to. So, on to choke, give it a pull. Let that warm up. Just want to check that blade isn't spinning. No, not spinning. So it did hunt and surge a little bit beforehand. So hopefully it'll uh, be all right. That's on full throttle. Drive. Still drives. Rotor clutch. Perfect. So no adjustment needed. So I'm happy about that. So you've got, you've got to engage this lever here first to engage um, the release for the rotor clutch. Push the rotor clutch in. Locks into place. Blade is now spinning, I can feel it. And it drives. I don't know about you, but I would say that's a success. So super happy with that. Unfortunately, my friends wanted to watch me do that, but um, they were on a FaceTime a minute ago, and well, it looks like Hank might have fallen over. Hank, are you there? Did you did, did you fall over, Hank? Did did you did did you miss all of that, guys? Did you? Did oh well, we sure, oh, well that's what happens. If, if you know you know you ever, you ever heard the expression you, you snooze you lose. So um. So I'm happy now. Um, so that's a cheap little fix, right? Um, cheap little fix. Um, oh, oh, hang on, Hank to me here, right? So he fell over again. All right, Hank, I'll bring you with me. Tell you, you're starting to get on my nerves. I'm, Hank, I'm trying to do a video here, and all you're doing is, is, is keep chatting to me. Right. So, um, so this has now had uh, the drive belt put on, new drive belt, which is good. And it's now also had the rotor clutch glued with JB Weld uh, refurbishment. So if you have a mower like this, or the Honda ones, or even the Hater ones, if you can buy just the clutch material, JB Weld it, leave it on there for 24 hours, and your mower should be good to go. And uh, yeah, do you know what? That, that JB Weld, that's good stuff. That is, and it, you know, it's, it, it once that sticks to the proverbial, it sticks to the proverbial. Um, it's good stuff. So. If you're looking for a cheap way to fix your rotor clutch on your lawnmower, then that could be the little hack from you, or for you, brought to you by Mixed Mowers, the Mower Man. So there you go, quick little video on the uh, John Deere. Uh, it came in originally for a, um, a drive belt, which, which had, was non-existent, wasn't there. I had to fit that for him. I just feel that maybe the bloke wanted to have a go, at it, but it was, it was just too much work involved. And uh, by taking the, the belt, uh, put the belt on, you have to remove the clutch and loosen the engine to actually remove the whole clutch mechanism. Thank you very much to my friend uh, Henry Mowarski from America. I think he lives in Arizona. Arizona or Texas or anyway, somewhere in America. 
Um, he's about 110 years old, and he actually sent me a video of a guy on YouTube removing it, because I was a bit stuck myself. So thank you very much, Hank, um, my old boy. Um, he's actually here. You, you right there, Hank? You right there, Hank? Hanky Spanky. Are you right there? Yeah? Good lad. Where, 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 where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, right, okay. Lithuania. Right, so... Um, once the dry belt was done, I noticed that the, um, the, the clutch material had deteriorated. There's, there's what is left of a clutch. There it is there. That's that piece there. So that, that should be a ring. And that's quite well worn as well. So those Warner clutches, um, if you've got a Warner clutch on your lawnmower and the clutch is gone, you can just buy the clutch material for about 20 quid. Just, just look it up on the internet. Garden Hire Spare Sales, I believe. Um, and with some JB Weld, you can just put a little bit of JB Weld around there, press it down with four clamps, or put a heavy weight on it overnight, make sure it's central. You're good to go. Lawnmower fixed, 20 nicker. Absolutely lovely. So I'm happy. I'll get old old fella, let him know his lawnmower's now done. He's not been pestering me, but he wants it back. So I know, he, I know he's probably um, stuck without it. So he can come pick it up today, and he'd be super happy too. So there you go. If I saw a video of Mixed Mowers and Mower Man on how to refurbish your clutch on your lawnmower uh, and do it cheap rather than buying a brand new half clutch about 120 quid, then hit the old subscribe button, not whack the old bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to seeing the episode of Mixed Mugs very, very soon. But until then, guys and girls, much more importantly, take it easy.